Before we get started, there will be spoilers for the Thousand Year Blood War arc of Bleach in the video to come. While the Vizard are often the butt of the joke when it comes to Bleach discourse, and with good reason most of the time, there's no denying that they remain some of the series' coolest characters, with incredible, diverse designs and equally creative powers and abilities. And I've made no secret of the fact that despite his shortcomings, Rojuro Rose Otoribashi is one of my favourite Shinigami. So it stands to reason that I'm a big fan of his Bankai too. Kinshara Butodan was honestly a bit of a surprise reveal back in the day, I guess I just wasn't expecting Kubo to dedicate that kind of spotlight to Rose, even if it is brutally short-lived. The beauty, though, of a Bankai like Kinshara Butodan, however, and by extension a character like Rose, is that for the majority of the community there's simply very little expectation. Unlike the last Bankai we looked at, like this Kisuke Urahara's Kanon Biraki Benehime Aratame, which was one of the most anticipated Bankai of all time, Rose got to debut his to relatively little heat, and I think it's all the better for it. It kind of came out of nowhere, and in my opinion impressed in more ways than one. Even if Rose accidentally gave up the ghost a few pages later. Hey, it's not his fault that Kubo wrote to him like that. Anyway, despite its short panel time, Kinshara Butodan is an awesome Bankai. But how strong really is it? What are its limits? What's its potential based on the very small amount of time we got to see of it? Today, we're going to take a look. First of all then, what is Rose's Bankai? I want to preface by saying that I love Kinshara in general. It's one of my favourite Zanpak Toe, and probably a large portion of the reason why I enjoy Rose's character so much. I'm a sucker for the more magical Kido type Zanpakuto as it is, and Rose's feels so unique, even amidst a sea of already incredibly distinct weapons. Rose is the only character in Bleach to control the power of music, and his Shikai takes the form of a golden whip with a beautiful spiked flower adorning the end. To be honest, while I was never certain we would even see it, I always wondered what on earth Kubo could actually do for Kinshara's Bankai, and it's safe to say he completely knocked it out of the park, particularly in regards to its design, delivering something that I felt to be surprising but at the same time, totally fitting. Upon activation, Kinshara's whip extends massively, coiling like a snake before unravelling to form a troop of roughly 16 creepy, faceless dancers, each one wearing the flower of Kinshara like a mask. This dance troupe moves in an eerie silence, almost alien in the way they act, their bodies made up entirely of Kinshara's whip, giving them all a gaunt, almost stick-like physique. At the same time, two enormous hands appear in the air above Rose himself, again comprised of Kinshara's golden whip. One of the hands wields a conductor's wand, and I assume the hands mimic Rose's own movements, as his physical sword has now been replaced entirely with a conductor's wand as well. And I say I assume because after this initial reveal page, we never see the giant hands again. But I love the little detail that one of the hands is even unravelling slightly at the base, just to remind you that these have been woven together with the elongated whip itself. All in all, it's an incredibly striking Bankai, and genuinely one of my favourite designs of the bunch. It captures everything I want from a Bankai, a huge physical construct that looks imposing yet magnificent, and crucially captures the essence of the Shikai itself. Even though they barely resemble one another, one look at Kinshara Butodan is enough to know exactly which Zanpakuto it originates from. And of course I appreciated the extra touches the anime gave it too. For example, the darkening of the arena as a spotlight falls upon Rose himself was a cool detail. Rose really doesn't get a lot of time to shine using his Bankai unfortunately, but Kubo is pretty efficient with what little room he has, and we managed to get a very good idea of how Kinshara Butodan actually works. 
Rose notes that his is a dance troupe of death, and the cost of admission is one's life. While Masked Emasculine looks on in surprise, Rose begins his production, activating the first performance of the show, Sea Drift. Conducting his bankai with his wand, Rose commands the dancers, and they encircle Mask, spinning rapidly around him, creating a typhoon of sorts. One cool detail is that Kubo alludes to the Bankai's illusory nature early on. As the dancers whirl around Mask, their speed increasing, the Sternritter sees them becoming a crushing torrent of water that slams into him and wraps around him, buffeting him from all sides and squeezing him tightly in the middle. But as you can see here in this panel, it's the dancers themselves that are actually merging their bodies stretching and meshing into one. So you have to imagine if you weren't being tricked by the illusion on display here, all you would really see moving around you at this point are the golden dancers who have kind of fused into a stringy mess spinning around you repeatedly. But with Mask unable to move thanks to the water's immense force or so he thinks, Rose switches to his second program, Prometheus. Suddenly the dancers are all holding fireballs aloft and they aim them at Mask, turning the centre of this spell into a furnace, incinerating the Quincy in the midst of their ritual. Mask is caught in the pillar of flame and screams as he's burned, but despite what his eyes tell him and what he seems to be feeling, he doesn't quite believe it fully. The Sternritter is adamant that no Zanpak Toe can control both fire and water, which is a little odd as I'm not sure why he would default to thinking that in the moment, but that it must be some kind of a trick instead. It's here that Rose reveals the true nature of Kinshara Butodan and how it relates back to his Shikai. Its power is indeed a trick. He isn't commanding both fire and water at all, but sound music, melody, and the like. Rose notes that there has been a melody ringing in Mask's ears since the start of his Bankai, and that music is captivating him, forcing him to believe in things that aren't real. Rose mentions that a performance is just that, after all, a sham that ensnares the hearts of the audience, tricking them into momentarily believing in something that isn't true, and that's exactly what his Bankai does, but with a little nasty twist. You see here, if Mask does indeed fall for the sham, for the ruse, if he does buy into the production and believe what he sees and hears to be real, then it will become so. Mask is trapped in place because he believes the water is in fact there, and his arms are scorched and burned by Prometheus because he momentarily believes the fire to be real. Again, the anime adds a nice touch to this sequence by actually playing a peculiar, ominous melody over the use of Rose's Bankai, which is clearly supposed to be what Mask is actually hearing in his head and what's now controlling his perception. It reminds me a little bit of a fellow Vizard Zanpak To, Shinji's Sakanade, and how when its Shikai is activated, it produces a sweet smell that warps his opponent's vision and sense. And the anime continues to add some additional flair to Rose's Bankai too, we see him actively conducting the flames of Prometheus, causing them to blaze into an inferno, presumably burning Mask even more, though I'm not sure entirely how that works, seeing as they're not real. And actually, that's a good question to ask later on. How much damage does Prometheus actually do to the enemy? Do they burn more the more they believe the act to be legitimate, or is it a flat rate of damage? Is Rose just conducting the flames to make it more visually interesting for us as viewers, or is there some kind of benefit to it? Is he not conducting the flames and the way they move and flicker, but in fact the music behind them, the music that is the source of the illusion? Does Rose need to conduct continuously to keep the ruse going? 
That last idea might actually be true, considering Rose's Bankai is a troupe of dancers and he is commanding their dance essentially. Without him calling the shots, there likely is no Bankai at all. But, well, Rose outright explains his Bankai to Mask, something that he has been heavily criticised for. Though interestingly, in a past club outside answer, Kubo basically said, not in regards to this scene specifically, but that he doesn't feel it's as important immersive when a third party narrator explains abilities over the top of the action so that probably goes some way to explaining why this scene happened though I feel like Rose could have just had an internal monologue or something instead to save himself the embarrassment and the serious injury but he is also a highly flamboyant and theatrical person who lives by the art of the performance so I guess it does make sense in a roundabout kind of way. Anyway, Rose notes that while his power is indeed false, when one's heart is captured by a lie, it'll be burned. And we see Mask's charred arm as a result. Rose then says that one will also breathe their last breath before declaring he has a fitting program for Mask's end. Ein Helden Lieben or a hero's life. As he raises his wand, a maniacal expression on his face, Rose prepares to seemingly finish Mask off in a single move, but, well, the rest is history. Before we move on, let's briefly discuss this final program of Rose's. It kind of seems to me like Sea Drift and Prometheus are both uniform abilities that Rose can kind of use against any opponent, but I do wonder about Einheld and Lieben. The name suggests it's a bespoke ability that Rose crafted for use against Mask himself, and while we don't get to see it in action, I think Kubo basically spelled it out for us what it was going to do. It was probably just going to end Mask's life right there and then, causing him to breathe his last breath, as Rose says. If the Sternritter had bought into it, it seems like his heart would have just stopped. But unfortunately, Rose told Mask everything he needed to know, and as a result, Mask shoved his fingers into his own ears, rupturing his eardrums and deafening himself rendering Rose's Bankai completely useless. As the illusory effects of Kinshara Butodan vanished, Rose was left wide open to attack and received a star-shaped hole through the chest as a result, almost killing him in one blow. So, I mean, that's it for what Rose's Bankai can essentially do. We don't get a lot of time with it, but like I said, Kubo does use the space fairly well, I think. While Rose has never really been a big hitter within the story, it is really cool that we got to see his Bankai, and it's even cooler that, to be honest, I think Kinshara Butodan actually turned out to be pretty strong. Yes, it has a glaring weakness, and we will dive into that a bit later, but honestly, this is a really unique Bankai with a lot of potential. Kinshara Butodan is perhaps most reminiscent of Kyoraku's Bankai, Katin Kyokotsu Karamatsu Shinju. They're both living performances, being led by the captain, driving the enemy down a path that seems to lead to almost certain death. The major difference, and why Kyoraku's is, in my opinion, far more dangerous, is that Kyoraku's Bankai doesn't seem to come with the huge drawback, the massive caveat that Rose's potentially does. Anyway, I think the Bankai is thematically perfect for Rose. It's a showpiece, beautiful and artful, with the spooky melody dripping in the background as the faceless golden dancers slither in an almost inhuman way. I think it's another testament, frankly, to Kubo's inexhaustible supply of creativity. But it's also sinister, creepy, and downright dark, with Rose tapping into both his and his division's more melancholic side to produce a Bankai that thrives on deceit, tricking his enemies into killing themselves, essentially, through belief. As far as illusion powers go in Bleach, it is quite an effective one, and like I said, pretty unique. But let's take a deeper look at the Bankai itself. What are its limits? How far can Rose push his illusions? We see him using both Sea Drift and Prometheus, but are they the only programs his Bankai has, 
or does he have a much larger supply? In Shikai, Rose is able to conjure spells called sonatas, though we only see one in the source material, but it is numbered 11, implying the existence of at least 10 or more. Is the same true for his Bankai? Taking the comparison back to Kyoraku's Bankai, many speculate that the play Kyoraku subjected Leel to is perhaps just one of many, so I wonder if Rose's Bankai is the same. And then in regards to that, I wonder what other programs Rose could possibly have up his sleeve. Considering the first and only two we've seen are both elemental in nature, perhaps his Bankai can tap into a whole host of powers from wind to electric to perhaps the earth itself. That's the cool thing about this Bankai, considering Rose uniquely uses the power of music to forge his illusions, his Bankai can presumably, on the surface, do just about anything he wants it to because again it's not real. Again, that's the difference between say, Rose's Bankai and Kisuke's Bankai. Kisuke's Bankai is limitless in its potential. It can do anything with reality itself. That's why that Bankai is so completely broken. Rose's Bankai can in quotes do anything, but it's all technically surface level. It's interesting, Rose's whole Bankai is predicated on people buying into it being real, but I honestly don't see why they wouldn't. From what we see in both the source material and the anime, both the water and the fire look totally lifelike and presumably, based on his reaction, Mask is physically feeling the effects of both elements as well. He only doubts it slightly because Rose uses both fire and water at the same time, but say if Rose had just stuck to using Sea Drift, for example, would Mask have ever been able to break free of the crushing power of the ocean descending upon him before being swallowed up? Why would he necessarily have any reason to suspect that one move wasn't real? And again, while unconfirmed, I do think the name A Hero's Life fits Mask the Masculine just a little too well, and so I think Rose is able to create bespoke programs tailored to fit his enemies, which is quite a powerful trick, as it possibly gives him an option to defeat just about anyone caught in his trap, and he seems to be able to come up with these quite quickly too. If the final program would indeed stop Mask's breath, or stop his heart, then Rose joins the likes of Kyoraku in having a Bankai that can outright kill its opponent with relative ease. Presumably, Kinshara Butodan is an area of effect Bankai, meaning that anyone near by friend or foe who can hear the melody will fall under its spell, but we never find out as Kensei is already unconscious at the time of activation. So let's take a step back then and enjoy a holistic view of Kinshara Butodan. We have a magical Bankai that lures enemies into a trap, tricking them into believing whatever Rose wants them to believe. And if they believe in Rose's illusions, if they buy into the play, those illusions essentially become real, or the effects of them do anyway. Honestly, that seems pretty good to me, and it goes back to the point I made earlier. At what point does an enemy begin to question whether or not they're being incinerated? Why would they question it realistically? I guess Mask on this occasion must have finally read the Dayton that showed no Shinigami ever having a Zanpakuto that controls more than one element, because without that, I don't really see why he wouldn't believe in this. And to be fair, even after questioning it, Mask still finds himself burned. Perhaps Prometheus wouldn't have worked on him a second time after that, we don't know. If you stop believing in the illusion, what do you see? Presumably just the golden dancers doing their thing. At that point, can they then be destroyed? In the anime, we see the dancers immediately evaporate thanks to Mask's star flash laser beam, but is that just because Rose is instantly brought to the brink of death, dispelling his Bankai straight away? Anyway, I think this is a powerful Bankai. Reasonably, it should work on just about anyone. Characters like Ken Patchy would likely be affected by the illusions and probably believe them as well, but I imagine he would just fight through it regardless, even faced with the incredible force of something like the sea itself. Kenpachi is an outlier though. I think Rose could capture the majority of characters in his Bankai, save for those that are clearly on a different level altogether, 
and retain control over the fight. If his Bankai has more programs available to use, the better. And the same goes for if he really can tailor the effects to the individual. How would that actually work? Kinshara Butodan is one of those untapped Bankai that I would love to see in action a second time, just to get a clearer view of how it works and what kind of limits it actually has. So with that in mind, let's talk weaknesses, as this is probably the biggest point of contention regarding Rose's Bankai. As I mentioned earlier, the last Bankai we looked at like this was Kisuke's, and his Bankai really doesn't have any weaknesses per se. It's for that reason and a few others that I think Kanon Biraki Benehime Aratame is one of the strongest Bankai in the series, no doubt about it. The same goes for the likes of Zanka no Tachi or Katen Kyokotsu Karamatsu Shinju, they're just on a different level entirely. Kinshara Butodan is a bit different, but I want to debate how damaging, in quotes, these supposed weaknesses really are, or if the effects of them are being amplified, blown out of proportion by the bad situation that Kubo put Rose in. Firstly, Rose controls music. His Bankai plays a continuous melody that tricks the mind. So if one can't hear anything at all, the Bankai is rendered completely useless. This kind of kill switch is present in most other illusory Zanpakuto as well. For example, Aizen's Kyokusui Getsu doesn't work on the blind, and I'd assume that Shinji Sakanade doesn't work on someone who can't smell. The only difference here is that Rose's Shikai, Kinshara, can still presumably work on people who are deaf, as it isn't completely predicated on sound. But what's a realistic situation for this weakness to actually crop up in, though. First of all, Rose flat out told Mask the Masculine that he controlled music and that the melody playing in Mask's ears was tricking him, so the logical conclusion, even to an oaf like Mask, is to block out your hearing. Interestingly, Rose says that simply covering your ears won't stop his Bankai, so you really do have to be completely deaf to avoid it. But yeah, if Rose had just kept his mouth shut, which remember is more on Kubo than it is Rose, then who would think to deafen themselves when being bombarded by the elements? You'd have to have prior knowledge of Rose's power to actually suspect it was the music that was causing some kind of trickery in the first place. Secondly, how many characters in Bleach would actually puncture their eardrums like that? It is really grisly when you think about it. Mask just rams his fingers right into his ears without a second thought, and I just don't think a lot of characters would do that. Certainly not without some hesitation on their part. Don't forget, the only reason Mask is able to injure himself in such a carefree fashion is because he knows James can heal him up right away. So yeah, I guess putting all bias on the table, I do think the deck was stacked against Rose big time here, narratively speaking. When you look at the two Bankai that Mask fought before Renji arrived, the Sternritter simply overpowered and outmatched Kensei's Tekken Tachikaze in a physical showdown, but against Rose, he was completely lost and bewildered before Rose told him exactly what to do about it. When you remove those variables, because let's face it, Kubo just needed Renji to look good in the moment, I really do think Rose's Bankai is pretty strong overall and quite unforgiving. It's not quite in the upper echelon of those without weaknesses, because even if Rose keeps quiet, there is still the off chance that someone could figure out the truth, and by doing so, they have the option to render his Bankai totally unusable, which is an issue. But Bankai, and to be honest, Zanpak To like this, are extremely powerful and versatile. Kinshara Butodan is, as I've said already, very similar to abilities like Kyokusui Getsu and Sakanade, not a bad company to be in, as they require very little investment from the wielder 
in order to get a lot back in return. From that standpoint, let's again compare Kinshara Butodan to Tekken Tach Kaze. Now, I'm not here just to dunk on Kensei, but the man has to do a lot with a little to really get anywhere using his Bankai. I'm not saying Tekken Tach Kaze is weak per se, but being a physical melee-based Bankai that completely removes the range advantage of his Shikai, Kensei is forced to get up close and personal to get any use out of his Bankai at all, putting himself in constant danger while fighting. Rose, on the other hand, can simply stand back and let his dancers work their magic. I'd love to know in the comments how you think other captains or captain level fighters would fare against Kinshara Butodan without prior knowledge of Rose's powers and without any helpful tips from the Vizard himself. So, in conclusion, I think Kinshara Butodan is a devious and deadly Bankai that simply wasn't given the due respect it deserved, nor the time nor circumstance needed to really prove itself. I imagine a lot of people wrote Rose off after that fight, but again, it wasn't so much on the character as it was on Kubo carving a path through the Vizard for Renji to walk upon. So, while I think having an actual legitimate weakness, a kill switch to the Bankai itself, does prevent Rose's Bankai from being among the very best, it's definitely up there. I would argue within the kind of upper mid-tier of Bankai in the series for sure. I definitely have to rank the Bankai again at some point, that's gonna happen in the near future. The Bankai seems to be highly versatile, very low risk and very low investment on Rose's part, and capable of acting both offensively and defensively, as shown by the Prometheus and Sea Drift powers respectively. Though Sea Drift could quite easily be offensive too, again highlighting the versatile nature of just this one ability. The Golden Dance Troop is such a wonderful design, and I really hope we get to see this Bankai again at some point in the future. I'm honestly still amazed this version of Rose hasn't yet appeared in Bleach Brave Souls either. But it all works for me, it all coalesces to form one of my favourite Bankai in Bleach. The imagery, the theming, it's all perfect for the ominous, emotional, artful captain of the Division of Despair. Rose is all about putting on a performance, and his Shikai achieves that on a more personal scale, with Rose himself being front and centre as he moves elegantly with his whip, performing sonatas on the battlefield. His Bankai then takes that idea and expands on it greatly, turning Rose from the sole performer into the conductor of an entire production, luring unsuspecting victims into the centre of Rose's twisted display. I mean, not only is that so awesome, but I really do think it is very powerful as well. Alright guys, well that's it for the video. Let me know down in the comments how powerful do you think Rose's Kinshara Butodan actually is? Was it hamstrung by the unfortunate circumstances surrounding its showing in the source material? Does it have a lot more to offer than we saw in the very short amount of time it was used against Mask to Masculine? I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Maybe dive into a little bit about how you think Kinshara Butodan could be expanded on. What other production what other programs is Rose capable of using? What do you think Einheld and Leben was all about? Was it going to just one-shot mask once he used it? All of this. Do let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And as always, I want to end the video by saying a massive thank you and giving a huge shout out to my supporters over on Patreon. I really do appreciate each and every one of you so, so very much. If you too want to support me over on Patreon, you can do just that to get your name in the credits like this and to get every video I release absolutely ad free. All right, guys, but until next time, make sure to hit subscribe if you're new here. And until then, I'll catch you later and I'll see you then.